Mike Green, really excited to sit down with Alex Gurovich of Hante Investments. Alex and I are good friends. We've known each other in the macro community. And Alex is well known for his thoughts on U.S. rates and the treasury market, as well as some insights in foreign markets that we talk about this week. Like if you tell me stock market is going to be 20% up a year from now and commodities prices are going to be up, do I think bond yields could be higher? Quite possibly. But you know what? If you tell me as a given information, I'm not going to be short bonds. I'm going to be long stocks. Conversely, uh, converse works too, right? If you tell me, for example, if rates are going to fall 100 basis points, is it possible a dollar will be weaker? Yeah, quite likely. But when I see a lot of people, actually I've seen people come on Real Vision who make an argument, we think dollar market, bull market is over. And some of them, not all of them, but some of them, the argument is that it's over because yields are going to go down. And my reaction to this, why don't you just long bonds? Because if you're taking some non-market price forward as an input and derive that something else may move because of that, why don't you just trade your input? Because if you're so certain that yields are going to go down, if you're so certain we're going into recession, why bother with dollar? Just So to me, the relative on the causality scheme, the relative value of bonds is high, being long bonds is high, but it doesn't mean that I have a solution that proves that yields are going to be lower. So I think that's actually, that's a really powerful observation, right? In our industry, um, and I'm certainly guilty of this as well, you often see people building a, a um, you know, a, a uh, castle in the sky, basically, you know, they, this this vision of the future world, and it can range from those who have been bond bearers uh, from the time of fourteen percent yields yeah. to you know, or, or stock bearers from from whatever level, uh, you know, they can create a story that allows them to justify kind of their preferred position. But but I think you're you're very right that. If the story is the dollar is going to be weaker because rates are going to be yields are going to be lower, right? Then trade bonds, right? Now the problem that they would argue is is that that means I'm then long dollars, right? That I I, I ultimately have to buy treasuries with dollars, leaving me long dollars in the future. Um, but a move from two and a half percent to one percent. It's going to pay for an awful lot of currency. <laughs> it does. And actually, that's what I do. I am long dollar and long bonds. And that's been my position. And that's position, to be fair, last 12 months were kind of trading water. They were not easy months. Mm -hmm. But that position, even under all the headwinds we had to both dollar and bonds, proved to be somewhat balanced. And 2016 still ended up being a really good year for this position because you made all the money on bonds. And if you were not stupid about how to trade bonds and if you wanted like maximum long at the Brexit time, you gave up the money on bonds, some of it, but then you made money on dollars. So it actually all, it was not easy, but it all played out in 2000. The same thing happened in 2015. First rally in bonds and bonds gave up and actually ended up 2016, 2015, we had two flat years essentially for bonds. But you made money on dollar in the end again if you traded it right.